Good morning and namaste to each of you. Thank you for joining me this morning to honor your mind and your body and your spirit. Let's take a few moments to become present. Find a nice comfortable seated position on a cushion or a block or towel, blanket, somewhere you can um, stretch out the back of your spine and the back of your neck, make it nice and tall and long. Opening your chest, opening your diaphragm and opening your heart. Close your eyes and soften your thoughts. Soften your eyes. Soften your shoulders. And soften your heart. Observe your breath as it is. Soft and gentle. Breathing life into you with each inhale. And relaxation with each exhale. Feel the grace of being present, returning to that awareness again and again. You may open your eyes. For this morning's intention, you may think of a positive word or a phrase to have with you on your mat and perhaps carry with you throughout the day. This morning's intention I'd like to talk about is the third limb of the eight limbs of yoga, which is asanas. Most of us were introduced to yoga by taking a yoga class where we wiggled into and wiggled out of poses. These poses are asanas. We learn Tadasana, which is mountain pose, Uttanasana, which is the forward fold, Virabhadrasana, which is the warriors, all three warriors have that name. Asana is Sanskrit for seated. And the original asana was de developed for meditation so the yogi could be comfortable seated within themselves. An asana practice would be done before meditation to prepare the mind and body to be still for a long time. Or it would be done after to relieve your body from stiffness. Fast forward hundreds to thousands of years and we have extracted the asanas out of the eight limbs of yoga and consider it a standalone form of exercise now especially in the west and asana practice is now about keeping us mobile by inviting poses into our body that add to our flexibility our strength and our balance but let's look at the placement of asanas in the eight limbs of the yogas. It's number three behind the yamas, which is number one, and the niyamas, which is number two. The yamas, such as kindness and non-excess, and niyamas, such as self-discipline and self-study, are important guidelines for our asana practice. They invite us to let the pose serve us, not us serve the pose. So for this morning's pranayama breathing technique, um, I'd like to um, talk once again about the ujjayi breath, which is the soundtrack to your asana practice. It, there's a lot of other breathing techniques, but this one is really related to um, 
doing the poses and listening to that <clears throat> ujjayi, which is also called ocean breath, that sound of the ocean. So you can regulate your pose to your breath. We, we practice the ujjayi breath on top of the deirdre breath, which is the complete breath, the three-part breath, where it comes from your stomach, up through your rib cage, up to your chest, and then flows back from your chest through your rib cage and through your stomach. Ujjayi breath also quiets the mind because you have that sound going. It increases oxygen and it slows the flow of the breathing. So with this Ujjayi breath, um, you um, make the sound, I call it the Darth Vader sound. So it's the, there's two ways of, of um, learning it. One is people liken it to when you're breathing um, on a mirror to fog up a mirror. So it's, and then that's the exhale, the inhale, it's that Darth Vader voice. So it, it kind of emanates from the back of your throat, <clears throat> makes the sound from the back of your throat. So you're, but you also do it with your mouth closed. Because as a, a yogi teacher that I follow says, mouth is for eating, nose is for breathing. So you do this, making this sound from the back of your throat, but with your mouth closed. So. So let's try practicing that. See if you can make that ocean breath again from the back of your throat. So let's remember that breath while we're doing our poses today. I'll meet you on the mat. I'm gonna bring my lemon honey tea with me in case I get a coughing spell. So the asanas, the poses, are broken down into different categories. Um, one category is, is the ability, and it's beginner ability, intermediate ability, advanced, and master. And master is what I consider pretzel poses. And um, if you are trained to be part of um, Cirque du Soleil or a former Olympic gymnast, you might kind of venture into the realm of master um, or some of the advanced. But for our purposes, we stick to the beginner and intermediate with once in a while an advanced thrown in there. And then the focus of the pose, these are the intentions of the poses. Um, they're for balance, they're for flexibility, they're for strength, and they're also for relaxation or restorative, um, having a restorative quality to them. And then the types of poses, there's a seated pose, there's standing poses, there's reclining poses, which we do prone, which would be on our stomach or supine, which is on our back. And then there's twists and bends to the standing and sitting poses and reclining poses. So what I'm gonna to do today is we're gonna do a lot of the poses we do most every week. And <clears throat> I'm gonna indicate the focus, the intention of the pose as was um, stated by this um, yoga app that I have on my iPad that I've used for years and years and years. It's called Yoga Studio. And they, they break it down into these categories. So I'm gonna to relate to you what they feel the intention is. And some of them are very obvious, some of them not so obvious. And um, some, of them, some, of, yeah, some of them I uh, feel there are certainly do, dual intentions there. 
So let's just start in our basic seated pose. And again, this is the asana that was the original asana, um, why um, this whole eight limbs was, was started. The basic seated pose is so that um, the yogis can get um, still to prepare for meditation. So with the basic seated pose, um, it's considered a relaxation pose. Um, it can be a, considered a little bit of a flexibility pose too, uh, depending on how comfortable you can get in, in this. And of course, it's a, a seated pose and it's a beginner pose. So the sun breaths, we're gonna add to that. Um, and that, I'm just gonna add that as getting our soundtrack to our yoga practice going with the ujjayi breath. So if you put your fingertips on the mat and inhale, bringing your arms up overhead with that deep ujjayi breath, make that deep sound and exhale. Again, ujjayi breath. And just, we'll keep doing this for a little bit to get that um, synchronization between our breath and our body movements going. Inhale up, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Next pose will be the seated sun twists. And these are flexibility poses. So we're gonna inhale, bringing our arms up overhead. Twist our body to the left and bring both hands down. The right hand comes on the left knee, left hand comes behind our hip. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Then inhale. We'll sweep our hands up and twist over to the right and come down, left hand on right knee, right hand behind our hips. Gaze is over to the right side of our mat and inhale and exhale. But inhale up, swing over to the left, exhale down, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, sweeping your hands up. Turning over to the right side. Bring your hands down on the exhale. Inhale. And then exhale. And one last time, both sides. Inhale, sweeping our hands up. Overhead. Bring our hands down. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, and then inhale, sweeping the hands up and down. One last inhale and exhale. Return to center. Have, um, if you have your legs crossed, at the shins, you wanna release the cross and place your feet side by side. We're gonna do a forward fold, seated forward fold, <clears throat> which is beginner and it's for flexibility. And again, this is to, for you to monitor your breath, find, listen to your breath and you're using the Ujjayi breath and find where that breath becomes shallow as you walk your hands forward. So slowly walk your hands forward using that ujjayi breath. And once it gets to the point where it's becoming a little too shallow or difficult, just back up a little bit, get into that sweet spot, that comfort place between relaxation and effort. And continue you, your breathing.
and then walk your hands back. And for all the forward folds, they're all about, the attention is all about flexibility. Now we're gonna roll down on our mat. <clears throat> roll down one vertebrae at a time, or you can use the express method. Come down, bring your knees to your chest and give them a nice gentle hug. And then send your feet down to the bottom of the mat. And we'll uh, come into mountain pose. So this is a reclined mountain pose. So our body is still active as if we were standing. It's not relaxation. Um, so our toes are actively pointing up to the sky. Legs are nice and strong. Gentle bend in our knee. Nails tucked to our spine. Shoulders are relaxed. The shoulder blades are nice and snug into the mat. Our spine and the back of our neck are nice and long and straight. Crown of our heads reaching up to the top of the mat or bottom of the mat, whichever way it's reaching for you. And I'm going to slide the inner sole of our right foot up our, the inner part of our left leg till it reaches the knee and then cross your left ankle, I mean your right ankle over your left leg so that the right ankle sits right above the left knee. Your legs are a figure four. And then bring your right or left foot up and place your left foot on the mat, guiding your right knee to the right a little bit. And this is a flexibility move. This is reclined pigeon. So you can stay here, or if you want, um, go from like a beginner of reclined pigeon to a more intermediate. You can interlace your fingers behind your left thigh and guide that left leg toward your chest. And if you want a little bit more stretch, you can interlace them around your shin, left shin, and guide your left leg toward your chest. So the degree of um, effort will be either beginner or intermediate or advanced. And then we'll place the left foot back down on the mat. And slide that left foot down to the bottom of the mat, keeping our right ankle on our knee. And I'm going to flip our right foot so that it's sitting on top of our left leg. And then we're going to gently guide our right knee over to the left side of the mat for a twist. And this is a flexibility move. And then bring that back. And you bring both legs back down, come back into mountain pose, and we'll do that on the other side. So taking the sole of your left foot, slide it along the inner leg of your right leg to you, till it reaches the knee, and then place your left ankle on top of your right thigh, right above the knee. And then slide your right foot up so that the right foot is on the mat. Gently guiding your left knee to point to the left side of the mat. And this is the client pigeon, the beginner stage. And then if you want, you can interlace your fingers behind your right thigh, guiding your right leg toward your chest for a more intermediate or then interlace them around your shin and guide it to your chest. Both toes should be flexed, pointing up to the sky. And listen to your ujjayi breath here. Maybe one is a little bit too much tension and your breath is shallow, so back off to a more intermediate or to the beginner level.
and bring your right foot back down to the mat, sliding your right foot all the way down to the bottom of the mat with your left ankle still on top of your right leg. And then we take our, right, our left foot and place it on our right leg and then guide our left knee over to the right side of the mat for flexibility. And then bring that left knee back. And we're going to come back up to tabletop. So you can either um, tuck your hands underneath your knees and roll up, or you can roll over to your side and make your way back up to tabletop, whichever works for you. So the tabletop pose, this is actually a balanced pose. So we have our fingers uh, spread out wide underneath our uh, arm, our shoulders. Your index fingers pointing to the top of the mat. The wrists are right below your shoulders. And you're trying to come with an even distribution of weight in your hand. So that's part of the balance. Your knees are right under your hips, navel's tucked to your spine, create a nice flat back. And then we're gonna start the cat cows. And this is a, a beginner strength pose, um, according to my app, but also I, I can not avoid thinking that it's a flexibility for your spine. So it's strength and flexibility. So we're gonna, Round our back, dropping our head and tailbone down for cat. And then inhale, lifting our head and tailbone up for cow. Exhale, rounding our back, dropping our head and tailbone down for cat. Inhale, lifting our head and tailbone up for cow. Rounding our back, tailbone and head come down. Inhale, lifting our head and tailbone up. And then continue at your own pace using your ujjayi breath to really synchronize that movement. You know, have that be that soundtrack to this, the movement of cat and cow. And then come back to a neutral spine, to tabletop, bringing your knees together. You can go into bird dog, and this is a strength and a balance pose. So we're gonna bring our knees together underneath our hips, extend our right leg out, feel that even weight uh, distributed, distributed in your hands, um, not tilting your pelvis up or down, having it parallel with the mat. And then lift your left arm up. And then we're gonna exhale on the flex. Inhale, point. Exhale, 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 flex. Inhale, point, and bring both hand and leg down. And we'll do that on the other side. So again, just reassess your, your weight in your hands. Lift your left leg up. Lift your right arm up. Flex your toes for exhale. Point your toes for inhale. Flex, exhale. Point, inhale. Flex, exhale, point, inhale, 
Flex, exhale. Point, inhale. Flex, exhale. Point, inhale. Flex, exhale. Point, inhale. Flex, exhale, and bring both hand and leg down. We're gonna kickstand our left leg out side of the mat and extend our right foot down to the bottom of the mat for modified plank. And this is a strength pose. Your left wrist is right below your left shoulder. And sweep your right hand from the mat all the way up overhead. And you can follow your hand with your gaze if that's comfortable. And have your hand right above your shoulder. And then bring your hand back down. Again, sweep it back up, big inhale. And exhale, bringing it back down. And then sweep it again, inhale. Sweeping your hand all the way up. And exhale, bringing it back down. We'll do that on the other side. So bring your knees back together. Kickstand your right foot out, outside the mat. Extend your left foot down to the bottom of the mat. Right wrist is right below your right shoulder. Sweeping your left hand up to the sky. Following it with your gaze if that's comfortable. Exhale down. Inhale, sweeping your hand up. Exhale down. Inhale, sweeping your hand up. And exhale down. Come back to tabletop, tucking your toes. <clears throat> Underneath, we're going to walk our hands back and come into a squat. So this is a strength and balance pose. We're going to push down into our toes and lift up into mountain pose. And with mountain pose, we'll go through our essentials. Put your big toes facing the long edge of your mat. You lift your toes up and spread them out. And then bring your toes down to the mat, lifting your heels up. And then bring your heels back down. Really feel rooted into your mat, into the earth. So the mountain pose, this one might surprise you, is actually a balance pose. And you'll know it if you actually ever try to stand still while your eyes are closed. I do this for my hairdresser and I'm wiggling all over the place and I realize I just can't seem to stay balanced in it. <clears throat> so it, made, it actually made sense to me after I thought about my hairdressers when she asked me to stand up to trim my bangs and I can't stand still with my eyes shut. So mouth pose essentials, our legs are nice and strong. It's an active pose. Our knees are softly bent. Navels tucked to our spine. Shoulders are relaxed and rolled back. Back of our spine and neck are nice and long and straight. Top of our head, the crown reaches up to the sky. We're going to sweep our hands up overhead and exhale forward fold, bending our knees deeply, bringing our hands down to the mat, to the floor. And any of these forward folds are flexibility uh, uh, poses. So inhale, bringing your hands to your shins, flat back, nice and long, back, long spine, back of your neck, gazes down. Then exhale, bringing the crown of your head down toward the mat. And then inhale, sweeping your hands all the way from the floor up overhead, coming up onto your tippy toes for palm tree. And we'll just sway here. And this is actually an intermediate balance pose. I remember when we first started doing this in our class, um, we were all over the place. We couldn't stay up on our toes very long. And now it's, it's just kind of almost becomes second nature. So bring our heels back down, sweeping our hands back down, coming back down 
to forward fold, inhale, halfway up, half forward fold, flat back. Exhale, dropping our head down, the crown down toward the floor. And then inhale, sweep our hands all the way up overhead. Bringing our palms together and then dropping our right hand to our right thigh and sliding it down toward our right knee for a supported side stretch. And this is a flexibility pose. And actually it's a beginner flexibility. Inhale, bringing our hands back up, dropping our left hand down to left thigh, and then bring that left hand down toward the left knee, side stretching to the left. Inhale, come back up again. Drop our right hand down, right thigh, slide it down to your right knee. And then inhale, come back up. And on the left hand side, slide it down to the left knee and come back up. Both hands overhead and we'll sweep them down to the mat, bending our knees generously and then up to half forward fold, flattening out our back, nice long spine. And then exhale, dropping our head down toward the ground. And then inhale, sweep our hands from the floor all the way up overhead. We're gonna bring our hands out in front of us as we drop our hips down toward our ankles, we're gonna come into chair pose. So as you, you can leave your arms at any height that's comfortable for you, monitor your ujjayi breath, and just send your seat down as far as it will go, like you're about to sit in a chair. Then inhale, come back up again. We'll do this two more times. So lowering your arms. Lowering your hips down toward your ankles as if you're about to sit in a chair. And this is a strength move. Inhale, come back up. And one last time. Bring your arms down. Come and sit in your chair. And then come back up. Inhale, back up. And sweep your hands down to the floor again. Inhale, halfway up, flattening out your back, half forward fold. Exhale, bringing your head down toward the mat. And then inhale, sweeping your hands up, all the way up overhead. Palms come together, then palms come to heart center. And then palms come to the back of your hips. Have your feet uh, hip width apart. Shoulders are relaxed and rolled back. Chin is tucked to your chest. And this is a flexibility pose. I think also a strength pose, similar to cat cow. So we're gonna slowly roll our shoulders back keeping our chin tucked toward our chest. We can continue breathing our ujjayi breath, adjusting our body to make sure that the breath is nice and even and flowing. And then come back up. So we're back to mountain pose. Inhale, sweeping our hands up overhead. And then exhale, forward fold, bringing our hands down to the mat. We're gonna extend our right leg back, coming into runner's lunge. And runner's lunge is a strength pose because actually you should be able to be in runner's lunge without using your hands. The strength is all on your legs. So we'll do that and then we're placing your hands so that they are on the mat 
we're going to bring our left foot to join our right foot coming into plank pose. And plank pose is a strength pose. And it's a beginner pose. And to keep it beginner, when you bring yourself down to the mat, you can use your knees, chest, chin, and that's a beginner flexibility move. Or if you're um, so inclined from plank pose to come down chaturanga, keeping your elbows tucked together and slowly lowering, that's an intermediate, actually, I think it's, no, nope, that's an advanced strength, strength pose. So come down and we're gonna keep our hands underneath our shoulders and then gently push up. This is a strength and flexibility into Cobra. And then keep pushing up to tabletop and then come down to child's pose. So this is a flexibility and relaxation pose. And then come back up to tabletop, tucking our toes under. We're gonna lift our hips up into downward dog with our hands, fingers spread wide apart. The weight is on our fingers, not on our wrists. Index fingers pointing to the top of the mat. Arms nice and straight. Chest is reaching toward your thighs. And the feet are pedaling. And this is a strength pose. then just slowly walk your feet up toward your hands, coming into forward fold, that flexibility pose. Inhale, sweeping your hands all the way up overhead, hands come together, hands come to heart center. Then we're gonna to turn to the right side of our mat and come into a wide-legged stance. Our toes are gonna to be turned somewhat pigeon-toed in with our heels tucked out a little bit. And wide-legged stance is a balance pose, and it's a beginner balance pose. So you have the same elements of mountain, your legs nice and straight and strong, gentle bend in your knees, navels tucked to your um, spine, shoulders relaxed and rolled back. And we're gonna make it into an intermediate pose, and flexibility pose by doing a forward fold and a twist. So um, with your hands on your hips, just pivot your waistline so that you're looking down at the floor. And if you have a block handy, you can use that, placing your hand on the block, coming into a half forward fold or forward fold. And then we're going to sweep our right hand up to the sky, following it with our gaze. And bring that right hand down. And do it on the other side. Sweep your left hand up to the sky. And bring that back down. And these are flexibility poses. And then bring your hands back to your hips with your knees bent generously. And then Pivot your hips so you come back upright. And then pivot our left foot so that it faces the top of the mat. Kind of move our back foot in a little bit, come into warrior two position. So the front leg is in a lunge position, the knee is over your ankle. You can still see your big toe over your, your kneecap. Back edge of your foot's nice and snug into the mat. And these are, all the warriors are strength. Actually, warrior three is a balance pose too, but they're strength poses. So bring your arms up, shoulder height, slowly turning your gaze to look at your left fingertips. Really feel rooted 
and have your legs nice and actively engaged with the mat. And then we're gonna take this to an intermediate pose by dropping your right hand down, lifting your left hand up for reverse warrior, peaceful warrior, sending your gaze up to your left fingertips. And then bringing your left arm back down, bringing your left arm to your left thigh, sending your right arm up to the sky for side angle pose, extended side angle pose. And this is about flexibility. This is a beginner's um, version. If you want a intermediate version, you would send your left hand down to the floor while your right hand stays up to the sky. Then inhale, bringing yourself whoop, back up to warrior two. You straighten out our front leg and then reach forward as we come into triangle pose. So we're gonna send our left hand down to our left leg, sliding it down, keeping our right arm up to the sky. And this is a balance pose. You can use your block there if that's more comfortable for you. And then inhale, coming back up to warrior two. And then we're gonna heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, our way back to mountain. We'll do that all on the other side. So I'm gonna actually do it from this end. So inhale, sweeping our hand up. And exhale down, forward fold. We're going to send our left leg back to runner's lunge. Again, that strength pose where strength is all in your legs. And then placing your hands on the mat, we're going to send the right foot back to meet the left, coming into plank pose. And you can either do the knees, chest, chin for beginner's flexibility or for advanced strength, you do the chaturanga. So gently lower yourself down to the mat with your fingertips underneath your shoulders. Gently push up and actually you're pulling more from your chest area. That's where the strength comes in. So this is that strength flexibility pose to cobra. And inhale, lifting up to tabletop and dropping your hips down to child's pose for that relaxation and flexibility. I particularly like the relaxation part of this. Then we'll tuck our toes underneath, coming back up to tabletop first. Tuck our toes underneath and lift our hips up to downward dog. And pedal out here. Listen to your ujjayi breath. And this is a strength pose, but for some people, this is even more relaxing than child's pose. And we'll slowly walk our feet up to our hands. Coming into the forward fold, that flexibility, and then sweep our hands all the way up overhead. Hands come together, palms come together, palms come to heart center. And then we'll turn to the left side of our mat, coming into a wide-legged stance. Toes are curled in, and a pigeon toe a little bit. Heels are out, navels tucked to the spine, shoulders are relaxed, 
This is a balanced pose. And you can make it into an intermediate pose by adding the forward fold and the twist to it. So let's uh, bend our knees gently, hands at the hips, pivot forward so our back's nice and flat and parallel to the floor. Send our fingertips down, either on a block or onto the mat. And then sweep our left hand up and overhead. And then back down again and sweep your right hand up and overhead. And then back down again. Keeping your knees bent, bringing your hands back to your waistline and then lift back up. And we're going to come into runners, I mean warrior two. So we pivot our right foot so it's pointing to the top of the mat and angle our back foot down and wiggle into this. So your front knee is over your ankle, your right knee is over your right ankle. Back foot is nice and snug into the mat. Your chest is open and in line with the long edge of your mat. Your arms come up to shoulder height and you slowly turn your gaze over to the right side. And this is all about strength. Really feel that energy strength in your legs and in your arms and in your spirit. And then making it intermediate, we're gonna drop our left hand back down to our thigh, lifting our right arm up for reverse warrior. And that's a strength move. And then we're gonna bring the forearm, right forearm down to the right thigh, sending our left hand up to the sky. You can send your gaze up to the sky too. And that's beginner flexibility. And then dropping your left hand to the mat if you'd like for intermediate level of flexibility. And inhale, come back up to warrior two. Take a couple of deep ujjayi breaths here. We're gonna straighten out our right leg, sending our reach of our right hand forward and then bringing our right hand down to our right leg sliding it down, coming into triangle pose. Then you can send your gaze up to your hand. Again, this is a balance pose. And inhale, come back up. Come back to warrior two. And then we're going to drop our hands and heel toe our way back to mountain. And bring our pinkies, pinky toes to the edges of the mat with our heels tucked in at 45 degrees. And bring our hands to heart center. And we'll lower our hips down, bending our knees deeply, coming into wide legged squat, which is an intermediate pose for strength. You see a lot of the strength poses have to do with your legs. With your hands together, you can bring them down, guide them down toward the mat, opening up your, your knees and your hips a little further if that works for you. Add a little bit of flexibility to it. And then we'll bring our seat down to the mat and come into staff pose. And staff pose is a strength pose. So we're at an L shape. Our toes are pointing actively up to the sky. 
legs are nice and long. If you feel more comfortable, you can put a, a blanket or a towel underneath your seat. Guide you down. <clears throat> Spine and back of the neck is nice and straight and tall. You can use your fists and kind of push down, lift up and get really acquainted with your sit bones there. So then we're gonna bring our right foot up and cross it over our left leg. And then wrap our left arm around our right knee, bringing our right hand in back of us. So this is a um, half spinal twist or sage pose. And it's a beginner pose for flexibility. Any of the twists would be about flexibility. And then bring yourself back to center. We'll do that on the other side. So come back to staff pose. Toes are flexed, pointing up to the sky. Back is nice and straight and long. You can use your fists again to kind of just resettle into your sit bones. Bring your left foot on the outside of your right leg. Wrap your right arm around your left knee, bringing your left hand to the back of your hips and twisting over to the left side. And then come back to center. <clears throat> We're gonna roll down again on our back so you can use um, the express method or the slow invertebrate uh, time method. And then we're gonna just bring our knees to our chest. And this you may notice is the, um, with child's pose, we're doing the exact same thing as we're doing here, only we're doing it on a, a, a prone position or whether we're face down. And this is like child's pose, only in the supine on our back position. So they're both relaxation poses. And you can interlace your fingers and wrap them around your right kneecap and extend your left leg down to the end of the mat. Toes are pointing up, flexed up to the sky. And these are all relaxation. Um, lower back should be kind of touching, try to get it touching the mat, tucking your navel toward your spine. And then bring that left knee back up. Give both knees a nice gentle hug against your chest. And then wrap your interlaced fingers around your left knee, extending your right leg down to the bottom of the mat. Toes are flexed, pointing up to the sky. Navels tucked to the spine, lowering your lower back toward the mat. And then inhale, bringing that right leg back up. Give both knees a nice gentle hug against your chest. Then send your arms out at shoulder height to each side, forming a T. And we'll exhale, dropping our knees to the right side of the mat. And this is a relaxation flexibility pose. And slowly turning your Gaze over to the left fingertips. It 
Inhale slowly, uh, turning your head back to center, and then inhale slowly, lifting your legs back to center. And then we'll do that on the other side. So exhale, lowering your legs to the left side of the mat. And then gently roll your head to look at your right fingertips. Relaxation and flexibility. And slowly roll your head back to center. And inhale, lifting your legs back to center. And then send your feet down to the end of the mat and prepare for Shavasana. And Shavasana is a pose. It's oh, typically the end of the yoga session, but it is an actual pose and it's a relaxation pose. So you, there's a certain uh, cues for it. You bring your, your feet at least hip, hip width, if not a little bit further apart, sending the heels toward the edges of the mat, and letting your feet just relax and drop loose. And your arms would be at a, a 45 degree angle away from your body. And the way I like to do this is to put one hand on my heart and one hand on my tummy. Just get my shoulder blades nice and snug in the mat and then open up my arms with palms facing up. And that just feels really, really supportive and restorative for me. And then you just relax. You let your, your body just sink deeply into the mat like you're sinking deeply into a cloud. And one other cue that you could use is to uh, slowly turn the corners of your mouth up towards your ear. That's always relaxing. And I have a poem today by Dana Falls, and it's titled Yoga. Yoga is not about the pose. It's not the alignment of the toes or hips or shoulders. It's not about the form. Yoga is an invitation to explore, not a command performance. It speaks the language of the soul. In the flow of breath and motion, yoga coaxes us, coaxes us from the confines of the known across the silent threshold into vastness. Yoga is the union of prayer and movement guided from inside. It is healing and the joy of saying yes to life. Breathe. Relax and feel the body receive its own truth. The seed of freedom flowers within each of us whenever we are open to what's real.